Hello there. <clears throat> I'm Scotty. You're not. Welcome back to Sci-Fi Saturday. I'm almost done. I got two more after this. We're talking about the 1951 Howard Hawks produced film, The Thing from Another World. This might be a short review because it's, it's kind of nothing really to talk about. I, I could talk about quite a few things, but <clears throat> might be short. So I've already so I've already reviewed the 1982 John Carpenter classic film, The Thing, and it's 2011 prequel, that's right, prequel, not remake, prequel, also called The Thing, which I still stand by, it's not a bad film. Everybody shits on this, and it's only because of the special effects. If the special effects were better instead of being CGI, they wouldn't shit on it. But everybody hates on this because of the CGI. I mean, we really need to stop hating on films because they use CGI, because it's gonna happen. Sometimes CGI is better looking in some other CGI. Who knows? Who cares? But, yeah. And so now, <clears throat> not as appropriate, that for Sci-Fi Saturday, I review the original 1951 version of The Thing, The Thing from Another World, which itself, much like John Carpenter's film, is a uh, is an adaptation of the novel Who Goes There? It's directed by Christian Nyby, but like I said, when I said Howard Hawks produced, much like with Poltergeist and then thinking that Steven Spielberg filmed most of it and just put it under, uh, was it Tom, Toby Hooper's name? Here, here it's, 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 uh, what's the word? It's disputed that it, Howard Hawks actually had a lot of input in this and might have more than just produced it. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. It follows a group of scientists and a reporter as they go to a top secret base in a, in the South Pole this time, instead of the North Pole, like in, in the remake. And they find something in the ice. So, <clears throat> right away there's differences, right? There's a woman in this movie where there wasn't no women in the original and the remake in the, I did it I said it wrong in the prequel sure but in this one no there's also this reporter whose name is Scotty and I do like the funny moment because he once he realizes there's something here he wants to get a picture of it so it comes through the doorway but and they shut it real quick and one of the guys goes did you get your picture he's like no you shut the door too quick you want me to open it again no. I like that dialogue. But yeah, it's very subtle. Which kind of had me a little bored. I understand. Cause you, I've said this before. Older movies to me, unless they're Dracula or Frankenstein, they just don't... Like, even Frankenstein's a little bit boring. They're both kind of a bit boring. But older movies to me are kind of hard for me to get into and watch. I don't mind them. But... Like, the older movie is the hardest for me to kind of get engaged with it. And this was no exception. Um, it was kind of boring. A lot of talking. It doesn't start with them at the research station. There's an opening and talking and getting everybody together. And then going to the research station. And then them finding the flying saucer. And then them finding the frozen creature, which you don't really see in full until towards the end of the movie. You know, there's that great scene that you've probably seen in John Carpenter's Halloween that's been everywhere where it steps through the doorway and you see the silhouette and then they set it on fire. Fantastic scene, by the way. There's that scene and then there's other scenes. Uh, also, unlike the 82 film and maybe the novel, this version is sort of a plant because they cut off his arm and they say they have dialogue indicating it's a carrot or something like that. And they said it could actually be plant-like, which I've seen shows movies of plant-like aliens before, sure. Plant-like, which is different. than It doesn't change shape. It just re... The only thing it does really is regrow limbs because the arm gets cut off, it grows it back, you know. And I think the actors do a pretty decent job with what they've got, you know, uh, dialogue-wise. Uh, I, I did feel there's a moment that made me really shake my head the overlapping dialogue, which, you know, I've watched reviews on it, and people are praising that, and I think it's, I don't know, I thought maybe it, 
it felt like they didn't do the dialogue right. It was kind of annoying, just kind of. Overlapping dialogue was just kind of going back and forth. Like, I know there's a movie that does that, and that was annoying. More annoying than this, I don't remember. I don't know. But, yeah. And it, it's not really a body, it doesn't have a body count. Like the, like these two, I say these two, the, nine, the 82 and the 2011 prequel. Um, because most of them survive. They set on fire, and they, you know, take care of it or whatnot. And then you have that ending with that eerie, watch the skies, kind of warning. Which is on in Gremlins on the little uh, mar theater marquee. Watch the skies. And it was originally going to be the name of uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind before Spielberg changes. So that could be a nod to that. Did Close Encounters come out after Gremlins? No, that was '84. I feel like Close Encounters was early earlier '80s. I don't know, but. And I still stand by it. It's not a bad movie. I just didn't particularly care for it. I'm sorry. That person made me mad. <laughs> made me mad when they're like, oh, this is my favorite movie. And if I watched your review before seeing it, I wouldn't want to see it. Well, <laughs> it's... These reviews are opinionated. They're objective. Or subjective. Whichever one means my opinion. <laughs> because... It's my opinion. It's how I feel. I didn't particularly care for it. If you love the movie, more power to you. And again, I've heard people say this is better than the 82 film. I would like to know what they're smoking so I can try some. But I heard people say that there's no comparison. That 51 film is better than 82 film. And I'm just like, even Tom Savini has gone on record of saying that he prefers the 51 film. The special effects maestro... Does not prefer the one with other special effects. Oh, he does. He does give credit to Rob Bottin's special effects in that, but he prefers the '51 film. To each their own, I guess you know. And I guess the older you are, like if you grew up with older films, of course you're gonna prefer those. But you know, I saw this one first, so I'm gonna prefer this probably. You know. You know, like what was it? There are remakes that I prefer, like Friday the 13th. And I, I actually, no, I hadn't seen the original before the remake. And I prefer the remake. I prefer Freddy vs. Jason over the, the original one there. You know? I prefer the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake over the original. Because I saw and knew the remake first. So it's all about, I think... How old you are and how you're raised and which one you saw first. So if you were raised on the original 1951 version, you're going to favor that over the 82 version. Even though you can admit that the 82 version is pretty good. In my opinion, though, the 82 version blows this one out of the water. There's a lot more going on. This one was kind of boring. I should be filming this in black and white. I'm not redoing this. <laughs> I messed up. I should have put this in black and white. I was going to. Black and white films are supposed to be filmed... Black and white reviews are supposed to be filmed black and white. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to give it a very low middle of the road. I'm not going to say it's not worth your time. Just check it out. It's not terrible. It's just not for me, you know? Uh, it's... I think it's competently done, and a lot of things are done very well. It's just, you know, it's an older film. So for me, not so much. It's not for me. But, you know, it, you could enjoy it, so... I'm going to recommend it, so I'll give it a little middle of the road. Yeah, I said it wasn't going to be that long. So, what are your thoughts on The Thing from Another World? Let me know in the comments like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Scotty, and next week, we're going to enter the world of Christopher Nolan. Is it real, or is it in your head? Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.